Hmm. Technical difficulties. Hold on there. Didn't realize I was going to have to sign into Twitch. Usually it just auto signs in. But it said, nah, you need to verify yourself today. Oh, okay. So bear with me. Un momento, por favor. Yes, I realize that my Spanish is horrible. You should hear my French. Okay. So, at this point, music should have occurred. So if you cannot hear music, please let me know. Okay, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. First off, can you hear me? Yay, butter's here. I also have a small fuzzy audience as uh, no music, okay. Then I'm going to try something else. How about now? How about now? Maybe, possibly, yay, nay. Still no. Son of a biscuit. I don't understand it. Sometimes, like, if I configure it one way, it'll go, and if I don't configure it the other way, it will go, and... Still no? Son of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to just go ahead and start regardless. Piss! One of these days, I really do need to actually sit down and get this freaking thing figured out as to why music doesn't want to show up. But um, I suppose at least you can hear me clearly in that case, though, without music being in the way. Still, that kind of sucks, because the music in this game is amazing. Um, however... I need to start doing some things like there. Okay, now it's on the main screen. Huzzah. Okay, so um, since I have not started off with my usual, I am slightly tipsy. I, I apologize in advance. Um, I also have a weird headache because my glasses broke and they are being held to my head with gauze. Um, I kid you not, I'd used a roll of gauze to tie my glasses to my face. But hey, I have my glasses that I can see. So my name is Astri's Cat Yodi. If you don't know me, I uh, swear a lot. So please be advised that uh, there will be bad words in this stream. Um, that just sometimes happens. So um, be prepared for that. Also, uh, just in case you are unaware, um, I am your friendly neighborhood, somewhat inebriated uh What's the word? Veterinary technician. There you go. That's heck. Um, I am also uh, going to talk tonight about cat litter, cat boxes, and other such kitty-related uh, excrement. So be advised there will be talk of poop and pee. So um, last thing is that uh, all of this will be based off of my own education and uh, experiments. So... So, anyway, so talking about cat litter and cat stuff like that. So, um, where to start? I recommend that everybody has their cats indoors for multitude reasons, uh, not least of which is the idea that uh, your cats will ultimately be far safer indoors than they ever will be out. I already did this part, so I don't need to do that again. 
what kind of where the will of the wisp beneath the shifting sands I think that's basically it hand to hand oh um where am I on hand to hand shit I got the no that's not what I want um is it that button no it's that button there we go um I have uh an old map the wanderer's pouch Herb pouch, spicy marsh clam soup, fashionable hat, empty land. Threads of spider silk. I was going to take that to the dude in the place with stuff in the pools. That's right. So I always advocate that people bring their cats indoors because, uh, one, they are hostile to the environment. And two, because it's a lot safer for the cats in general. So um, if your cats are indoor only, guess what? You need a litter box. That's just how it going to be because kitties need to poop. And kitties need to be. So if you have kitties indoors, they're going to have to go somewhere. And that means you need to have a litter box. Now, the general rule of thumb in veterinary work is if you have a number of cats, you take that number of cats and you... That's not the button I wanted. Shit. I need to fix that. Okay. You take the number of cats and you add one. Yes, everybody does poop. There's a whole book about it, about that everybody poops. Um, so, yes. Ow! Son of a bitch. So, um, it is highly recommended that you add at least one extra litter box per cat. Well, not per cat, but to the level of n the number of cats that you have. So, if you have two cats, you would want three litter boxes. If you have one cat, you would want two litter boxes. If you have... Say, oh, I don't know, 10 cats. You will want at least 11 litter boxes, okay? Because cats are finicky, to say it gently. But more to the point, they're fastidious little creatures. And when I say that, I mean not necessarily that they don't lick their own butts. They absolutely do, but everybody poops sometimes. I mean, I suppose... <laughs> I don't remember the lyrics going quite like that, but maybe that's just me. Um, so the the idea is that cats are very um, particular about their bathroom habits, and it's generally a good idea to try to honor that as best you can to avoid problems with elimination. Now, when we say elimination, we mean both pee and poop. Uh, inappropriate elimination being the term that we use for any and all animals who pee inside the house, um, if it's a dog, or pee in undesignated areas, or poop in undesignated areas, which is, frankly, most areas, honestly. Um, most of the time, they do not like to, uh, to say, we, you know, caught our dog pooping in the house. We like to say, oh, well, uh, they, they were eliminating it appropriately. So, um, to avoid that, you want to make sure that the animal has a chance to eliminate safely and comfortably. Now, cats are a little bit more picky about what safely, safely and comfortably looks like. For a dog, safely and comfortably may just mean, you know, not in a place with loud noises or not in a place with the dogs or whatever it happens to be. With cats, it's going to have to kind of be all of those things. Um, when we have an animal in for, say... Um, a hospitalization for some reason or another. When we have a cat in. For dogs, we'll take them out to go potty. But for cats, we often, you know, we have to provide them a litter box. We can't exactly take them out to go pee. But um, we do have to provide them a litter box. Now, cats away from home are going to be like, fuck you, dude. I'm not using this box in this crazy place with all these weird smells and weird sounds and things that might try to eat me. Hell no. So when you think about it in those terms, you have to think about it in terms of the cat. The cat is going to look at this as, I'm not putting myself in a vulnerable position so that you can then attack me when I am, you know, trying to take a dump. That's just rude. So they will hold it. Like cats, seriously, I don't know how, but cats are really good at being able to hold it. And I'm talking pee and I'm talking poop. So if they really don't want to go, they just won't. And then that causes all kinds of problems all on its own. So you have a situation with an animal that is extremely high maintenance to put not too fine a point on it. 
um, and you've got to you've got to account for that. So what does that look like? Well, we've talked about the number of um, of litter boxes to have, and the reason for that is because it reduces the amount of stress that the animal will have to be under if they can rely on the idea that I'm always going to have a litter box available to me privately. Now that sounds kind of high maintenance. Again, cats. Um, God damn it, why can't I just jump up there? This is stupid. It's stupid! There, okay. Ow, my head really hurts because these dumb glasses pinching into my face. But it is what it is. So, um, so that's the first thing. First thing is providing the accurate number of litter boxes. All the number of cats, some total, plus at least one. If you want to provide more, that's more than fair. Just remember that these are all going to be bo litter boxes that you have to clean. Which leads me to my next point. Keeping them clean. Now, I don't just mean regular scooping. And I do mean regular. I clean my litter boxes out every day. And honestly, considering some of the digestive issues that our animals have, um, that is appropriate. Now, some people don't have time for that. That's okay. But you really should be doing it at least every 48 hours. Do not wait a week. I've heard of people being like, oh, I only clean it out once a week. Please don't do that. That's gross. I mean, think about it in terms of what you would want. Would you want to go and use a toilet that somebody had not flushed since last Sunday? I mean, ew. Father's old spyglass. Please give me this spyglass. Yay! Okay, now, I says I've only explored like 84% of this, but I don't know where the other amount could possibly be. So, despite my completionist nature, I'm going to have to continue on. This. Er, give me that. So, please clean your cat box as often as possible. And if you clean it more than once a day, hey, that's not a problem. I'm not going to say that you necessarily need to clean it after every single time they go to the... Do I need a refill of what? Oh! <laughs> yes, it does. Sorry. I I actually don't hear it on my thing, so I'm, I'm good on, on booze, if that's what you mean. Um, I need to find a better way of having that come up, because I can't have... For those who are trying to follow along with my scattered train of thought, I have my laptop open so that I can see the chat because I don't know how to use the chat while I'm streaming um, on my main computer. So I have my laptop open, but that means that my husbeast um, will sometimes ask me questions, and it's up to me to look over at the chat to actually see if anybody's actually talking to me. Um, and that's great and all, but, like, I miss things. Including questions. Including questions such as, do you want a refill of booze? And these are important questions. Your questions are always important. Oh, Jesus! Ow! Spike! Ow! Fuck! Go away. Um, so. What was I saying? Oh, yes. So, um, nope. I actually don't remember where I left off. Shit. I was talking about cats. I was talking about peeing and pooping in boxes. Oh, cleaning it. So yeah, clean your boxes early and often. Um, automatic cat boxes are good for this. Um, the mechanical ones, those are expensive as hell for a very good reason. Because most people don't want to clean their cat boxes regularly because it's gross work. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to do it every single day, that might be an option to you. But money is usually an object, especially in these sorts of times. So you might just want to have to, you know, suck it up and do it as frequently as you can. Um, yes, the peas and the poops and the cleaning boxes. That is, in fact, where I left off. Um, so if you have a situation where you have lots and lots of cats and you have lots and lots of boxes, um, consider delegating work if you can. <laughs> Because honestly, it's going to get to a point where you're cleaning all these boxes by your onesies. And that's where, it, that's where it comes into the don't be a crazy cat lady if you cannot put in the work to actually take care of the animals. Um, because if you are not neurotic like I am about keeping their cat boxes clean, then 
perhaps having more than, say, two or three animals at a time is not for you. Um, I'm not saying this to be mean, but I'm saying this in the terms of what's best for the animal. So, hey, Karazi! Hey, what's up? I don't think I've seen you in one of my streams in a long time. Um, so, yes, if you have cats, please actually take care of the stuff in which cats need to pee and poop. Um, keeping it clean doesn't just mean scooping it out. It also means changing out the litter. It also means actually scrubbing the cat box every once in a while. These are important details. Um, some veterinarians will recommend once a week. Again, that's if you have all the time in the world and all the money in the world to throw out that much litter. Um, I myself personally get away with doing it about once a month. Um, I am lucky to have cats that do not have such bad litter box habits that I need to do it more frequently than that. Your mileage, again, may vary. Cat to people ratio not, should not be more than two to one. You know, I honestly agree with that um, to an extent. If you are the kind of person uh, who I have, if you look at the, uh, the chat up and above, I have linked a person. Uh, her name is, the, excuse me, their name is Lel, and they are an expat from the US, they live in Spain, and they rescue street cats. And they rescue street cats and they take them in and they try to find them um, places to live and adopt them out or get them fixed. And, dude, quit following me, that's creepy. That's really creepy. Th thank you, I guess, you creeper. Um, so, yeah. Um, there are exceptions to that, I would say, if you are responsible enough to actually keep up on them like they are. Uh, but, yeah, as a standard rule of thumb, if you're just your ordinary kind of person with a 40-hour work week job and you don't have the time to just constantly be looking after cats, I would say, I would say that um, it's not a, a bad rubric to say um, the number of cats should not exceed people by a ratio of more than two to one. Is this a, nope, that's not a thing I can land on. Okay, good to know. How do I get up there? Oh, by using that thing, I guess. Woohoo, I figured it out. Oh, sorry, I did. Why is that funny? Rude, rude and slanderous. Um, so, where was I? Oh yes, keeping it clean. So I would suggest at least scrubbing out the litter box no fewer than once a month. Um, just because the buildup of feces and urine stains and all that kind of wonderful, delightful stuff in there is is really kind of gross and unseemly and you don't want it. Um, and think about it again from your cat's perspective. Would you want to go to the bathroom in a toilet that had not been cleaned for more than a few months at a time, especially when there's no flush option. So that being what it is, and knowing that now, oh, hang on a second. Apparently I'm very hard on my P's. Consonants in general. Oh, my non-hard stops, okay, cool. I'm so glad to have a moderator who can actually not only hear, but also help me adjust. <laughs> it's so nice. Anyway, so yeah, it's one of those things where you, you need to be cognizant of the fact that they're not going to enjoy going in a litter box that's nasty. So try to keep it as clean as you possibly can. That includes cleaning it out. Um, so when you take into consideration things like actually scrubbing it, emptying all the litter out, and replacing it with clean, fresh litter once a month, it does appear to be more of a chore than many people are willing to undertake. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I don't know what loop litter is. Oh, loop litter box. What is that? Karazi, can you enlighten me a little bit as to what you are referring to? Because this is not something I have heard of before. Yes, shock and amazement, I don't know everything. Eh, I can't just jump up there. Piss. Okay. Actually, we're talking about piss to a degree. 
problematic. Problematic piss. It's a sifting litter box, three trays with offset slats in it. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Um, so it does work then. Okay, because I'd, I'd seen those and I wondered if they were kind of gimmicky or not. But um, honestly, if that works, cool. Um, just something as long as it works for you and as long as it works in general, um, I'm, I'll recommend it. Shoot. Um, I am 100% behind methods and mechanisms that do work. Uh, Kua asks how I feel about litter genies. Are they useful or are they gimmicks? I personally use a litter genie next to every single litter box that I have. That's how much I love them. Um, they make it easy to clean the litter box without having to take like daily trips to the trash can. You can just clean it, you scoop it, and you and you put it in the litter genie and you do the little thing and then you walk away. And that's literally it. It's seriously easy and I really, really recommend uh, litter, genie, litter genies or any of the knockoff brands, frankly. Um, the mechanism itself is what works and is amazing. Um, it is a little bit of an investment initially, but once you make that initial investment and, um, and purchase the actual mechanism itself, um, the only thing you have to worry about on is refilling. And honestly, the refills themselves are no more or less of a problem than just garbage bagging it every single time. You also disinfect and wipe it down literally every time. Uh, literally every time. Literally. Uh -huh. I see what you did there, Kua. Very funny. But yeah, wiping down your, uh, your, your slatted one, I understand that would make it a lot cleaner if you... If you actually actively clean it every single time that you sift it. So, ow, right into the spikes. That was smart. Why am I going through the silent woods when I could just fucking warp? I am a dumbass. Woo, shit. Okay. Um, so, okay, so... For those of you who are probably watching this on my YouTube channel or whatever, um, somebody in the... the chat had, ow, motherfucker, had recommended uh, something called a, um, where is it, a loop, litter box, loop, litter box, L-U-U-P, oh, son of a bitch, I almost died, I almost died a horrible, suffocating death, that's not awesome, okay, um, and they say that they, uh, they wipe it down after every single use, which, shit, shit, Shit! Shit! Oh, son of a bitch! Ow, motherfuck! God damn it! I'm gonna die! Damn it! Um, but they wipe it down after every time they sift, which makes total sense. And if you do that, then it'll help keep it clean. Now, I still recommend giving it a good scrub every now and again, which I'm guessing this person does. Um, and I recommend that for any and all litter boxes to include closed litter boxes and open ones, which brings me to my next caveat, which is, um, I suppose it's not really a caveat, but my next point or something. Um, closed versus open litter boxes. Uh, I was talking to one of the vets actually today, um, surgery vet that I was working with today. And they said, um, so what are you streaming about tonight? Because they remember that my streams are every other Monday. And I said, we're talking about litter boxes. She said, oh, are you going to talk about open versus closed? And I said, yeah, that, that was going to come up. And she said, do you know the difference? And I said, um, yes. And she goes, if you want a real easy way to explain it, think of it as a latrine versus an outhouse. Because honestly, that's what it comes down to. It's, do you want to use the bathroom in an open air facility or do you want one that's closed now that's not as straightforward as you might think um and that was kind of her point is they both will work if they're kept clean and sanitary and organized and otherwise a pleasant place to poop or pee but some people will prefer to have the open air setting the, and extrapolate people to cats here and some will prefer the closed setting um, out of privacy respects and concerns. 
that is something to keep in mind. Not all cats are the same, much like not all people are the same. They have different preferences. And that's okay. If you get a litter box and your cat refuses to use it, consider switching the box. Um, there are several different varieties. You can either do a top closed box. Um, I use those. I am trying to use those uh, specifically because I'm getting a puppy here, hopefully soon. And um, I don't want the dog getting his face into the litter box to eat it, or her, rather. So that is something to consider. Um, my cats generally like privacy, so a closed litter box does work. What if you want a closed litter box, but your cat wants to do a standing three-legged... <laughs> ah, yes, the power dump. Um, one of our cats is interesting, and... <laughs> And he likes to try to brace one leg up on a surface, one leg, or the front leg on, on the, the surface of a, of a thing. Vertical surface, I should say. Um, another leg on the edge of the litter box. And the third one, I want to say, just sort of almost hovering in the air at points. And then poop. And it's really quite spectacular to watch in a macabre sort of way. <laughs> but, um, but yes, cats will find ways that are comfortable for them that you would not expect. Try to honor that as best you can. <laughs> Two front legs on walls, one rear leg on the rim of the box, and one leg in the litter. That's right. My, my voice sounds nothing like I imagined it. Yes, it's uh, it's annoying. T I find my own voice annoying actually quite much. Words. I can't words today. I couldn't words earlier. It's a Monday. Um, so, yes, if you have an animal that has a very bizarre method of pooping, you're going to have to find a way to, uh, to accommodate that as best you can. I'm sorry. Um, it's just... Like I said, cats are individuals, dogs are individuals. We tend to just think, oh, well, a dog's a dog, a cat's a cat. It's not that simple. Some of them are going to have their own preferences, and you do kind of have to honor that. Okay, so I can warp to the place with the stuff. It's a good voice. Oh, I'm glad you don't think it's annoying. Is it ideal to feed your ostrich pumpkin pie? Not necessarily. Uh, pumpkin is not considered a natural diet of ostriches. Uh, therefore, I would say it's probably inert and harmless. However, um, I would not recommend it simply by virtue of the fact that it is possibly able to cause stomach upset and end up with really runny stools. Not that bird shit, even ostrich shit, is particularly cohesive. Um, ask me how I know. Um, can you feed an ostrich kiwis? Do you mean the people or do you mean the fruit? Because that's an important distinction, Kua. Come on. Ah. Oh, hey, we're approaching my least favorite part of the game in case anybody's curious. You'll see it in a little bit, I think. I can stop squirreling around like a dumbass. Oh, the dude's down there. Oh, shit. Son of a fuck, 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 bonk. Where was I? Oh, yeah, I was talking about poop. So some cats will prefer a an open air. Some will prefer a closed. And some will prefer something in between, um, such as the little semi like almost bowl shaped ones so if you find those and your cat enjoys it use it the main thing with cats in particular because they are such finicky little bastards is do they use it do they eat it do they drink out of it those are questions you have to ask whenever you're doing things with cats if they won't eat the gourmet food that's meant for them are they eating because if the answer is no that's a problem with cats in particular I've covered that a couple of times. Um, so 
if they won't drink out of a metal bowl, we'll, we'll drink out of a ceramic one. Use the ceramic one. Stone tablet. Oh, it's a map stone fragment. I need that. Thank you. I think. We. So. Or th that's true. Kiwis are also birds. Carnivorous ostriches. Uh, for the record, by the way, most birds are actually semi-carnivorous, regardless of how vegetarian they may seem or appear. Um, oh, shit. I'm having some trouble here. Hang on. Ah! Don't die! Where am I? Oh, I need to go that way. Okay. So, yeah, if you leave a chicken alone with other chickens, sometimes that chicken will attack another chicken and eat that chicken. I'm not kidding. They will eat mice and rats if they find them alone. Or lizards. Or really kind of anything that they can catch and eat. I've heard stories of chickens or turkeys attacking their own flesh because they're delicious. I can't disagree with them. They are quite tasty, but, you know. So, carnivorous ostriches is not entirely out of the realm of possibility. I would not feed an ostrich a kiwi person, though. I don't think your friend kiwi would enjoy being fed to an ostrich now. Yeah, it, yeah. So, chickens will eat pretty much anything, and, and that's a little terrifying sometimes when you think about it. I digress. Um, so in terms of the litter box thing, find what works and use it. Um, this brings me to litter in general. Um, some cats are very finicky about what their paws touch. If you ever want a cat to not scratch at a certain surface, make it sticky. Like, that double-sided tape stuff works really freaking well. And it's no accident. Because they cannot stand the texture. Um, some cats like to stand on or otherwise um, uh, play with or knead or even lick um, plastic bags. Because the texture is pleasing to them. However, some do not. Um... It's, it's, they're very texture. Yeah, anyway, back to poop. The output of eating. That is poop. Yes. In general, oh, shit. I can't really pause when I'm doing this crap. Ow. Fuck. <laughs> Ow. So, when it comes to litter, you have to keep in mind a couple of things. One, residue. Cat litter can, will, does leave residue. And by that, I mean, um, the fun stuff that you encounter on your floor, the fun stuff that you will encounter um, on their paws, son of a fucking ow, the stuff that they will track onto your bed, and occasionally even sometimes the things that, um, that will get stuck in their fur, and that's always fun. Who, son of bitch, biscuit, piss. Biscuits don't piss, for the record. Yeah, it's, for whatever reason, cats love to lick fucking plastic bags. I do not understand this. I will never understand this. Except I totally understand this because I was the kid that used to lick rocks. Because they had different textures. And it was interesting. Yes, shut up. I know, I used to lick rocks. I'm not proud of this. So, um... Texture and litter can be extremely important when cats are doing their business. Ah, ha, ha. Don't get eaten by the little crab machines. Not machines, people. They're like land mussels. It's terrible. There we go. So, um, there are different kinds of litter out there. Oh, thank you, Butter. Because I always forget to do that. So there are different kinds of litter out there. There's the clumping clay. Everybody knows about the clumping clay. Um, that one in particular is useful if you like to scoop out the gross stuff from your litter and throw it into a litter genie. Makes it real easy. <coughs> Drawbacks include a lot of residue. Um, clumping litter and other such small grain sand type litters 
are notorious for having the clingiest of little itty bitty rocks that will stick to their little paws and it's it's pretty heinous to find it in your on your pillow or you know get it stuck in your socks or whatever it happens to be so you know take that with a with a grain of sand eh there's also paper litter uh, there's one in particular that I can think of named Yesterday's News. Ow. And that one um, is made out of recycled paper. Yeah, bitch, on the first try. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, don't lick the litter um that's gonna really stick to the tongue <laughs> i don't advise that um shit 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 go oh that was bad oh that was that was that uh, shit fuck god hang on a second i'll get back to the litter thing in a minute while i try not to die follow me little dude follow me and blow up right there god damn it you weren't supposed to blow up on me son of a bitch um Yesterday's news works really well. It's very eco-friendly, and I'm just going to get blown up all to hell, apparently. So I'm going to heal myself a little bit. Uh, the problem is is that um, it's... No, lick rocks, not litter. <laughs> um, it is kind of still on topic. <laughs> Come to think of it. Thank you for pointing that out. So, um, the drawback with yesterday's news or other paper litter is that it does not clump. You do not get a nice, neat little mound of goo when you are moving on to cleaning the cat box. You actually have to sift out the spent litter, as it were, um, which is paper that has now been somewhat... Um, well, you know what happens when you get a tissue paper wet? That kind of a thing. It just sort of blizz and poops and poofs out and becomes kind of unusable almost. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to scoop out. It's a little bit more challenging, but it's absolutely doable. Uh, it absorbs water, which is to say urine, way easier than it absorbs things like uh, feces. Ow, ow, son of a bitch. I didn't know I was in this spot. Oh, God. Okay, so... Ow, 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 ow. Tiny little circles. Tiny little... Ow, son of a... Fuck. Shit. Ow. <sighs> okay, so this area really sucks. I don't remember this area, and that... freaking kicking my ass. Is that, oh, there's a shiny thing there. Ooh, ow. Set on fire for the shiny thing. Oh, hey, that... Rock is on fire. That's why it hurts to touch it. Okay, cool. Good to know. That's astacular. <laughs> Heal. You know what, dude? That sucked. That was a low blow. Um, I wouldn't recommend disposing of the recyclable litter in the fireplace because as soon as you set that on fire, it is going to stink. <laughs> It is going to smell so bad. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, it does make it pretty easy to scoop out poop because it doesn't really stick to it. Um, another drawback is odor control. There really isn't any with paper litters. Um, a note on odor control, by the way. I tend to tell people to avoid the scented litters because scented stuff tends to actually have more problems than it's worth. And I say that with, with all the kindness in my heart. Um, it's, it's usually pretty toxic. Um, not necessarily that they're going to lick it and die or something like that, but it's just not the best. Um, well, someone else's... Okay, yeah. If you dispose of it in someone else's fireplace, that's totally fine, especially if you don't like them. There we go. I'm going to save for a minute. Phew. I don't remember it being this difficult to get here before. 
Maybe I'm just thinking back on it with rose-colored glasses. No, give me the shiny. Shit, there. I missed a shiny thing back here, so I'm going back to go get it. Urgh, can't get up there. Oh, there's a... If I can just get the... There it is. There's also a thing up there. Um, so there's clumping cat litter. There's uh, regular old-fashioned sand litter, if you want to use that. That stuff um, doesn't usually have any odor control benefits, but it can, will, and does um, hold urine together, usually. Um, the disadvantage is that it does not usually clump, however. Um, catch it, bag it, drop it on someone else's front door, set fire to it, ring the doorbell, run. Indeed. So, um, the disadvantage with things like clay um, or sand is that as it's very granular, um, you may encounter problems with blockages. And this is a whole different story. Um, male cats in particular are prone to blockages. You may have heard me talk about this at one point or another. Um, it is still absolutely true, 100%. Um, and there have been some studies that suggest, I don't know where that's going. It's gonna launch you into the air. Oh, I was supposed to use that to, okay, my bad. Um, and urinary blockages are not something you ever want to deal with. Just flat out do not want to deal with them. They can cost the hundreds of thousands, or hundreds of thousands. They can cost tens, no, not even tens of thousands, regular thousands. They can cost thousands of dollars. <laughs> I'm trying to use math while I'm playing this game on a Monday. This is very difficult. <laughs> But the truth is, is that um, it usually takes at least about three days of hospitalization. It takes medication. Once your animal blocks, there's usually a uh, diet change recommended, which can be expensive on its own right. Urinary blockages are bad, okay? So avoiding those is always good. And there have been some studies that suggest that more granular kinds of Litters, such as sand litters, um, can, yeah, and they can also kill your, yeah. Um, yeah, if it doesn't, if it goes untreated, by the way, a, a urinary blockage can and will kill your cat within a few days. Um, it's just, everything about it is bad. You can only open this part once you've gotten the other wisps, by the way. Which is good, because there are things in here that you absolutely need to have in order to actually beat this part. So, yeah, it is recommended that you don't use uh, granular kinds of litter if your cat is prone to blockages. Now, there's still some studies coming out on that, so your mileage may vary. I personally use a high-quality um, clumping litter. And it works okay. I haven't had any problems with it. But always follow your veterinarians. Um, yeah. It's the worst few days ever. I've heard of people not bringing their cat in until, like, next to the end. And it's like, what the hell made you wait this long? Your cat isn't peeing. If you couldn't pee, wouldn't you consider that an emergency? So why is it different for your cat? So, um, yeah, do be careful about those kinds of litters. Um, one of the studies that I heard in particular focused on the light litters, and by that I mean the um, lightweight litters. So there's like tidy cat, and there's tidy cat lightweight or something like that, or featherweight or whatever it is. And that was one of the ones implicated in that problem, so be careful with that. Um, let's see, what other kinds of litters are there out there? Uh, there's corn litters, surprisingly enough, and wheat litters, if you don't like paper. Uh, they are granular, but they're coarser. 
So they typically are a little bit, um, I don't know, they, they mimic clumping to a degree. And they're less likely to, um, yeah. It can, it, once cats show symptoms, generally speaking, you are in deep shit. Because cats are some of the most stoic, difficult to fucking diagnose little creatures. They're like, I'm fine! And then, like, their organs are falling apart at the seams. And it's like, mm, no, you're not. You are everything but fine, actually. Well, yes, if you have chickens, I would not necessarily um, advocate corn litter because your chickens might be tempted to eat it as grit and or scratch in it and or kick it everywhere, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having it in the first place. Um, that being said, I wouldn't let your chickens near your cat box anyway. Not that I'm worried that they're going to eat the poop, but that they might try to eat the uh, clumping or clay cat litters as grit. <laughs> Walnut and wheat litter is really good. But okay, so uh, Lady TL said, I use a mix of walnut and wheat litter since walnut is really good for scent, but the wheat lets me see if she's having problems. That's true. So there's many different kinds of litter out there, is really the point. And just as there are many kinds of litter, there are many kinds of litter boxes. And just the same, Find one that works for your cat. Um, again, I advise against the scented ones, just because adding that kind of stuff is not good. Um, hey, that looks like me. Yes, kitty litter also works to clean up oil spills and blood. Um, also, if you need to clean up blood, hydrogen peroxide. Just saying. It's, it's great for it. It really is. On clothes, on carpet, on fur. What? Okay, so here we are coming to my least favorite part of this entire goddamn game. And you'll see why in a minute. Oh, forgot there was a save point. Yes, hydrogen peroxide is liquid gold. Yes. Yes, the boss is uh, not good. Wasn't there a thing I was supposed to access over here? Or was that not it? No, that was not it. Okay, cool. Good to know. Here we go. Ladies and jelly beans to my least favorite part of this game and the reason that I don't like it any more than the original. In fact, I love the original more. I'm sort of about to fight a sandworm. Sort of. Not 100%. The bitch of it is, is that um, much like in any other boss fight or dungeon in Ori, if you fuck up, you have to start all over. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Kitty or doggo is litter trained, but then they start chronically not using their regular method. What are some remedies? First, take your pet to the vet. That is my first suggestion. And the reason for that is because if a cat suddenly, or if a dog suddenly, stops using its normal bathroom routine, um, it could be medical or clinical. However, if it's not, there is a possibility that they were startled near the, uh, their usual spot. Um, you have to make them feel more secure. When we hospitalize a cat, oh, here we go. When we hospitalize a cat, we... Uh, always put a towel over the cage. Random corners to do their business. Yeah, if you have an animal that's suddenly deciding to use uh, various parts that they shouldn't um, to use their toiletries, then you need to start looking at whether or not they were in a situation where 
they felt unsafe in their litter box, or if um, they were startled near their litter box, or if it's something that has changed. If you have changed litter suddenly, or if you have changed their location, or their um, the box or anything suddenly without any kind of introduction. If you're going to change a litter box, by the way, I always recommend using some of the old litter inside it just to kind of give them a chance to adjust the new smell to the, uh, the new place. Or the, the old smell to the new place. Fuck! Oh shit, I was doing so fucking well too. Come on, get your ass up there, Ori. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first fucking time I have ever beaten that on the first try. I hate that level. Hate it so fucking much. So yes, I just fought a sandworm. Okay. <clears throat> Zoomed in intestinal worm. It's not actually all that far from the truth, to be completely honest. That does look a little bit like a hookworm. So yes, if your animal suddenly starts having changes in behavior, you have to start looking at what else may have changed to cause a change in that behavior. Only the Weeping Ridge. I mean, it's only like the doom center of Doomtown. Hey. God damn. I hate that one. For the record, in case anybody is curious, my heart rate is through my freaking neck right now. Yes, I see that. Thank you. That was not what I was looking for. I was looking for the way out. Yeah, the, the absolute ne necessity of precision in this game is a little out of control, which is... Again, one of the reasons I like the first one a little bit better. It wasn't that you couldn't be awesome at it if you were... I rephrase. It's not that you can't beat this game if you're not 100% awesome at doing, like, specially timed fucking platforming skills shit. But it is considerably more difficult, and you will find yourself getting more frustrated more easily. Um... Like I do, because I have zero patience. Unless I'm at work and then I have lots of patience. Because those are my patients. Eh. So yes, uh, I'm trying to answer the question, Kua, I swear. But if, uh, if there have been changes in the environment, if there has been a new member of the family added, such as a child or a, uh, or a new pet, those are things that can potentially cause the animal to feel unsafe in its own environment and potentially start... Um, Exhibiting, exhibiting inappropriate elimination. That is also something that you can potentially talk to your vet about because vets, surprisingly enough, are generally speaking trained on behavioral issues and will be able to potentially help you with that. I didn't actually want this. There we go. Whoa. Is there something I'm missing? Oh, up there. Okay. All right, you know what? I don't need you. There. You got a dog and your cat is pooping normally. It's also moved to the basement. Um, sometimes they will find ways of, uh, of protecting themselves in stressful situations if a change of environment occurs that don't necessarily manifest in uh, bathroom problems. Sometimes their eating habits will change. So it's just kind of a your mileage may vary, again, comes down to the whole animals or individuals kind of a thing. Urgh! I know there's a way to get up there, but I can't. 
<laughs> e. What if I do that? Yes, bitches. Okay. Okay, is there anything else in here? Oh, there's some more things. Ah, oh, shit, I missed that? Son of a... <laughs> All right, well... Uh, uh, um, if your cat eats the local baby possums in the neighborhood, I would suggest getting her tea warm <laughs> fairly regularly. <laughs> Also, that's a great way of getting leptospirosis. Be very careful. Um, in case anybody was curious, leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease that can affect all kinds of mammals, including humans, dogs, cats, and we, in fact, have a vaccine against it in dogs. Uh, we do not have one for humans or for cats. It typically seems to, for whatever reason, affect cats less frequently, probably because of the fact that cats are aliens and their immune system is a little bit overclocked. That being said... Signs typically include vomiting, diarrhea, and organ failure. So if you notice any of these symptoms, please go immediately to the vet. And uh, on top of that, look for it in your dog. If your dog continues to have those sorts of problems, please immediately go to the vet. I am going to warp to here so that I can go get... No, no, I want to... No, hold A to... Son of a bitch. There we go. That's the other thing I don't like about this game versus the original is the fact that um, there's too many toggles. Like, it's neat to have new features and shit, but this is a little out of control. Oh, hey, look at that. We're at time. Shit. Culture toxoplasmosis and make it affect humans. It already affects humans, just in utero. That's all. One of the only... Uh, ones that actually breaks the placental barrier in humans, actually. It's kind of awesome in that regard. I know you're not... So anyway, um, did anybody have any other questions about cats, cat litter, cat boxes, cat poop? Don't let your dogs eat cat poop. Dogs love to eat cat poop because it's high in protein and they think, mmm, this is delicious. And that's how they get all kinds of delicious, nonsensical worms and stuff. So don't let them do it. Because it's gross. Also, um, uh, that's how you can culture all kinds of nasty other things in your dog that you don't want getting. Because then if your dog kisses your face, you have a cat eating question. You have a te uh, some preg pregnant test subject. Okay. <laughs> okay. Easy. Don't eat cats. Yeah, please... Uh, mushrooms can and will grow on dog and cat poop, though more frequently in dog poop than in cat poop, because, again, high protein source. Can I just go straight across from there? Ooh, I can go straight across. Well, there's a... Yeah, fuck it. We'll go this one. Hmm. It may just be that she does not like wet food. Um, I've talked a little bit in the past over some of my previous uh, who's and what's. Streams, that's the word I'm looking for. Nouns suck for me, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Um, cats can eat dry food and be fine. They can eat wet food and be fine. There are advantages and disadvantages to both and either. A mix of both is generally getting the best of both worlds. Wet food has the advantage of having a w higher water content, and since cats have a notoriously low thirst drive, it can be really nice to give them that extra little bit of wet in their food. However, it is not necessary if you, uh, if you can see them drinking enough water and or providing them with sources that are fresh. Um, dry food has the advantage, and yes, I know I've heard people say that this is ridiculous, but it is actually factually correct that if you have a cat uh, eating wet food, or excuse me, dry food um, exclusively, that its teeth will typically be better than an animal with wet food only. So, again, your mileage may vary. Take that with grains of salt. But uh, if she doesn't want to eat wet food, she may just not want to eat wet food. You can also try mixing in her favorite kibble. You can also try um, 
low sodium chicken broth to kind of sweeten the deal. But uh, if she doesn't want to eat wet food, she may just not be a wet food drinker. Uh, that is not true. Cats must eat food and, and in order to be fine. <laughs> There's this thing called hepatic lipidosis. It's a problem. And cats get it. And it's a problem. And if they don't eat, that's typically how they get it. God damn it. Do the thing that does the winning. Where's the awesome setting? There. Ow. Well, it wasn't there. Huh. So she has a particularly low thirst drive. That's, yeah, I can see why you'd want to get her to try and eat more wet food. Um, ask your vet. Honestly, you may just be able to, in this current time, a lot of doctors are doing telemedicine. You might just be able to call and say, so I have a question about my cat eating. Um, I'm just wondering how I can encourage her to eat more wet food. And they may actually just be like, oh, yeah, you do this. Oh. Oh. And eat no food and not be that okay that <laughs> I would strongly again uh, suggest against a vegan diet for any animal not just in the terms of making sure that your cat and dog has adequate nutrition as far as not eating vegan but in terms also of not eating vegans because people are gross and not very nutritious. If you've ever done any research into what happens to man-eating tigers or lions, you will notice that they typically are extremely unhealthy. It is, it is not a good thing to eat people. I don't have enough information as to whether or not vegans are nutritious. <laughs> Yes, I understand the concept of long pork. No, I don't agree that it's a good idea. I feel like I'm missing something. What am I missing? Well, I'm gonna go back here like I, ah, fuck. Well, I was gonna go back there like I always do. It, wait, it, 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 there. Plants good, sheep great, vegans eat plants, so therefore sheep, therefore great to eat. I don't think that's how the food chain works. Vegans cannot eat sheep, no. But vegans eat grass, therefore vegans are sheep, I think is the connection we're making. As peculiar as that may sound. <laughs> At this point, um, no, veganism is, is the plant. No. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, this is rapidly running off the rails. Unless anybody has any other questions about uh, cat boxes and litter and stuff like that, I think I'm going to save it and probably call it a night. <laughs> Um, I will state that uh, I will be doing this again two weeks from now, so uh, I will be posting a Twitter poll for anybody that uh, that wants to contribute to that as a subject. Um, there are a couple of things that can come up. Oh, I could tell you a funny story that happened today. Um, I almost got my face bit off. <laughs> That's my funny story for the day. Um, we had some farm dogs come in, and the owners are trying to do right by these farm dogs. And uh, they are Great Pyrenees mixes that are horribly underfed. They're, I think the heaviest one was 53 pounds. And these dogs are, you know, not young. They're like a year and a half old. So, yeah. Um, oh, dang, I need to... Shit, there's a lot of things I don't have. Awesome sauce. Um, but uh, we have a coworker, or I have a coworker, who has a uh, black and tan coonhound. Yes, I recognize that that is a particularly offensive term, but that is the name of the breed. I'm sorry. Um, and 
that particular black and tan coon hound barks at everything and scared the ever loving shit out of these guys and then uh and then i ended up with uh with a dog trying to jump out of my arms cuz he would not walk on his own and um yeah i i i don't, he he got so scared when she barked at him that it, well bayed at him really is what it was and um he tried to get out of my arms as quickly as he could and tried to bite my face off in the process. So, that was awesome. How good to eat our meat eating plants? I don't know. So, um, yeah, I think at this point, I think we're pretty well done and out of time and all that wonderful stuff, so. Anyway, next week, uh, we'll be talking about other cool shit, and like I said, I'll be putting up a post on Twitter. Check it out. I will post this up on YouTube at some point when I'm not an idiot, um, because I constantly procrastinate it. Um... If you can, donate some money. Again, thank you. Better for posting that up there. To L, they're a wonderful person. Like I said, expat uh, US to Spain, and they rescue feral cats and spay and neuter them and get them medical care as well as get them adopted out. They are wonderful people, and you really should help them. Um, if not, and you're not feeling particularly charitable toward that, you can always check your local zoo. Zoos are hurting a lot right now. COVID has really fucked them up. So if you have a few extra bucks to spare, toss it to your local zoo. Those guys need it. Um, other than that, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Take care of uh, your pets as best you can. When in doubt, ask your vet. And uh, as always, wear your mask, wash your hands, and try to stay out of trouble. Or at least make good trouble. There's lots of good trouble to be had. But don't get arrested for something stupid like jaywalking. Okay? Oh yeah, that's, that's also something. Um, speaking of zoos... We found out today that the first ca uh, case of COVID in a great ape happened at the San Diego Zoo. The gorillas came down with it, and uh, it's bad. So, so far, they appear to be just coughing. They don't appear to be having any actual horrendous symptoms. We're hoping for a full recovery. So, everybody be good. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.